So, all right, let's get into lesson three. So now that you guys learned some of the basic stuff, it's all about applying this to your web pages. If you don't apply anything, you're not going to get results, which is what Big Nesh and I were discussing earlier, right? What was one of the biggest questions? How do we apply what we're learning to our own websites, right? And the first thing is you need to find the areas to fix on your site first. So first is do a site colon command for your own domain name, site colon your domain name dot com. You'll see what pages are being indexed. If you only have one result, something's wrong. If you have many results, all right, you're off to a good start. So if you also have many versions of your homepage, you see right here, it's HTTPS www.mydomainname.com. If I had HTTP mydomain.com, www.mydomain.com, HTTPS mydomain.com, and HTTPS www dot my domain name dot com it would be too many variations that's four variations of the same page you need a 301 redirect all of them to one so pick one technically you'd want the https but pick if you want https without the www or with the www uh, you also want to check your organic traffic with your organic traffic uh, you want it to continually grow right like Go look at Ahrefs, your Google Analytics. If it's continually growing as expected, awesome. If you're not making any changes to your site, you're not adding any content, you're not building any links, well, of course, it's not really going to grow. But assuming you're doing stuff, it should be growing. If it's not growing, something's wrong. What are you doing that's not causing it to grow? Um, and whether if it's not growing fast enough or it's not growing at all, a great way to start is using Screaming Frog. Click the download button, right? You can go to screamingfrog.com. Once you download it, put in your URL, and this is where I'm gonna get into like what to fix with your on-page SEO. So once you add in your URL, it'll start crawling, okay? And you just click the start button. Then what you wanna do is go to page titles and go to click on duplicate. From there, you can see any duplicate title tags. Any ones that are duplicate, fix them. Create a unique one for each page. This will help improve your rankings. You can also go to Copyscape and type in yourdomain.com. If you type in your domain, what you'll find is you can see who's stealing your content. And I wouldn't type in more so your homepage, but type in your internal pages, your content pages, your product pages, and you can see who's just jacking all of your stuff. You can reach out to them and either try to get them to link to you or remove all the uh, copied content that they have. You also want to look for errors within Google Search Console. You're going to see errors. It's going to show you, uh, you know, software for errors, not found errors. You need to fix those. Anyone that's not found, make sure you 301 redirect those URLs to the right URLs. The reason it's not found is people start linking to you and they link to the wrong URL or they link to pages that don't exist anymore. So here's some general things in Google Search Console. You have to first eliminate any duplicate descriptions and title tags. You also don't want short descriptions. This is super important. If this wasn't important, Google wouldn't show it in Search Console. And I kid you not, just making these changes after you wait like 30 to 45 days, if you have a lot of these errors, you can see an increase in search traffic. So here's another thing that I love looking at. Um, through SEM Rush, you can end up seeing just general data on page titles for a website. And you can see if it's too long. Ideally, it should be more than 75 characters. If it's longer than 75 characters, then you make it shorter. Or if it's too short, you know, then you want to make it more longer and descriptive. This will help with click-through rates and maximize the potential you're getting from your Google impressions. So another cool thing is in SEMrush, once you put in your URLs, it'll show you how many pages don't have meta descriptions. The last time I checked in Google Search Console, they don't show this. They're okay with that, but you don't want to have empty no descriptions. I have this problem in a lot of my pages because I'm lazy. Uh, I just hired someone a while ago to go and fix this because a lot of my old ones don't have meta descriptions. My new ones do. And by just adding in all of the right keywords within the meta description, it can help increase my click-through rate. A lot of this stuff is tedious, but it does work. Now, going back to Screaming Frog, 
when you put in your URL, you can look for just any 301 redirects. Because you want to make sure you're using redirects for bad pages. If you're using them, great. If you're not using them, then there's something off. So make sure you're looking at redirects and seeing, you know, all right, are they right? Are they wrong? You always want to end up using the right ones. So let me give you an overview of redirects. 301 is when you're telling Google, hey, I permanently moved. If you have abcd.com and you decide you bought a domain name abc.com, you took off the letter D, that's when you do a 301 redirect. And this tells Google you permanently moved and transfer all the juice. 302, on the other hand, is just taking your code or and your website and your URLs and being like, hey, you know, we've temporarily moved. We're out of season. Let's say you're a seasonal business. You had a winter collection and now you have a summer collection that was you know, focus on a different area of your site and you're just 301 redirecting them because the winter collection is no longer available. That's just a temporary change. You can do a 302 redirect for that. Users, right? 404, that is when users can't get to a page. But your 404 error pages, uh, technically a 404 app. So I skipped two of them, but you get the point. So I'll go to 404 and then I'll go back. But the 404 error pages is the page is not found. This usually means people are linking to a page that doesn't exist or they just for somehow copied and pasted the wrong URL. So 301, any of your 404 pages. 400 error means people can't get to the page, right? So when they get redirected, 400, they really just can't get to the page. 403 is they're not authorized to access the page. And 500 is internal server error. There's something wrong with your code. The main ones you need to pay attention to are the top two and the last two. So 301, 302. Always try to use 301s. Try to avoid using 302s. 404s aren't good and 500 errors aren't good either. The worst errors out of all of these are 500. If you keep getting 500 errors, you won't even rank on Google. You also want to check to see if the anchor texts are wrong with your website, if they're too rich. If you can see with neilpatel.com, a lot of my anchor text says Andy Beal. I bought a website, I 301 redirected his site to my site. Uh, not really just link juice, but more so for traffic, because he was getting a lot of traffic, but then he stopped updated his blog, which was called Marketing Pilgrim. You can see that's the number two anchor text term. What you want to end up doing is you look at all the bad links, and you want to start uh, disavowing them, which I'll show you in a bit. You also want to look at your thin content. So in Screaming Frog, I want you to do this. Type in your URL, look at your word count, because when you're doing internal, you do, you know, filtering HTML, you click on the word count. I want you to look at the word count. How many pages have very small word count? The ones that have little to no word count, like 200 words, 48 words, start fixing them. The more thorough you get, the better off and the higher your rankings will be. Right? And make sure when you're looking at word count, you manually go to the page and don't include the navigation in the word count. That doesn't really count. They're look, Google's looking at the text on the page. You also want to make sure your images don't have missing alt tags. Remember how we talked about describing the image because Google can't read what an image is? So with Streaming Pro, you can go to images and you can click on missing alt tag. This will help ensure that Google is picking up the images correctly so you can get the most traffic from Google image search. Right? You can also want to look at response time. This is another way to check page speed in addition to the Google Analytics way. In Screaming Frog, it shows you the response time. The longer the response time, the worse it is. The quicker, the better off you are, right? So the quicker the response time, that usually means the faster uh, load time that you're going to have or page speed. With your internal links in Screaming Frog, you click on internal, you click on in links, that shows how many other pages are linking to that page. This is a great way to put in your own URL to see, so you can see from Google's eyes what they see as the most important pages. This is also an amazing way for you to see what your competitors find to be their most important pages. Because you can see what in links or internal links your competitors are doing to their own site. And if certain internal pages have the most in links, that means your competitors are trying to get more rankings to that page than any other page. Now keep in mind your homepage is probably going to have the most in links because almost every page always links to the homepage. But in general, you want to look at which internal pages have the most in links. Backlinks. This will go into this over the next coming weeks. But with backlinks, the more you have, the better off you are. 
So let me first describe to you what Google considers a good backlink. Something that is unique and relevant. So if it's a unique website with amazing relevant content that links you, that's great. If someone who has relevant content, right, and they link to you, it's better than someone who has irrelevant content. They also say if someone like you who has content on your site, if it's very useful and really powerful and good and people get value out of it, it's much better than if you had content that wasn't as useful because then people won't be linking to it. Then they want you to also put yourself in the visitor's eyes, right? So when someone comes to your webpage, do they find this page really beneficial? If it's beneficial, they're like, awesome, this is great. Is this also a page people want to share? Is this something that bloggers would want to link to? Right? It's not just about having a lot of links, it's about having relevant links pointing to relevant content on your site and they want you to make sure that your content is so amazing and beneficial to people that they're willing to link to it, share it on the social web, and even link to it from their own blog and discuss it and do trackbacks. So not all your content is going to have high quality backlinks. Some of it's going to be junk in which you're going to have like Viagra and spam and porn and casino stuff linking to you or scraper sites you can disavow these low backlinks. It'll help improve your rankings. And you just use a disavow tool. Through the disavow tool, you can just remove any bad backlinks. So the first step is you go to your Ahrefs. You put in your own URL. You click on anchors, and you can see all the anchors that, are, uh, that you have pointing to you. And then you can end up diving more in depth, including no more details, and then get a full list of all the referring domain names that are linking and causing those anchors. You can then go through each of those links, line item by line item, see if the text is relevant, the site is, and just disavow anything that is junk, and it should help your rankings climb up. So the way I clean them up is when I'm going to the anchors and I'm looking at them, I just go and I look for anchors that are too rich. Um, like if 100% of my anchors say the word SEO, 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 I know someone's trying to spam me, and I'll start no following them because I know that's not practical. If the anchors are spammy and irrelevant and they don't match my content, I also disavow those because I know it's just going to hurt my rankings. If the anchors don't even match, even if they're relevant but they don't match the page they're linking to, I disavow. For example, if someone's using the word SEO but it's linking to my e-commerce page or my like, why would I just leave that? Right? I'm like, no, this page is about e-commerce. It's not about SEO. So you also want to check out broken links, put in a URL, you can click on backlinks, you can click on broken. This is a great way to also generate more links. Broken links are a great way to generate more traffic because you can email all of these sites who have broken links and ask them to change it to a relevant, valid link. Easy way to just get more traffic. If someone already linked to you once, why wouldn't they change that link and link to you again? So I like linking out to all the people who linked to me when it was broken. Um, and what I end up doing is I end up emailing them with a template. It's not on the screen, but it's something basic like, hey, Johnny, I know you're linking to uh, my website, but the URL you're linking to is actually wrong. You're linking out to xyz.com from this page. The real link is actually this. And by doing that, what you'll find is you'll start getting way and way more people linking to the right place. You also want to reach out to people who have linked to you negatively, like bad spammy links. It's not good enough to disavow them. You also need to just reach out and get some of those links removed. That's what Google wants to see. This is the template I like using. Hey, X, Y, and Z, right? So, hey, Jeff, my, na uh, my name is Neil, and I work for neilpatel.com. We're trying to re remove some of the backlinks pointing to our site created by a previous SEO company that worked for us. Unfortunately, they used some sloppy methods to build backlinks to our company, and they also spammed uh, your website with blog comments. I would like to apologize for this, and hopefully you can help us remove these links. Our site is linked on your website here. It points to this URL on my site using the anchor text A, B, and C. Please let me know if I can help uh, you with this. Thanks, your name, and your social media profiles for proof. Now, this template is usually sent out this way because most people who build links in spammy ways typically do it through blog comments. If they're doing it through actual websites, in most cases they're paying for these links. No one wants to pay to spam your website. They usually just do it through blog comments, even though a lot of them are no-followed. 
but not all of them are. So you want to make sure you get them removed. And if you can't get them removed, then you want to disavow, but you want to first try to get them removed. You go to the disavow page, you add in all the URLs. It just helps increase you know, your rankings over time by having a super clean profile. A lot of people don't like doing this, but I've done it for all my sites, and it really does help. Um, and with the disavow, you're just uploading a text file just saying, like, here are all the links I want disavowed, and then Google just doesn't come. When you're disavowing, make sure you don't pick good ones. Like, don't pick, like, Huffington Post and Entrepreneur. Pick the spammy sites. Make sure you also use schema markup. If you ever search for recipes, you see it, like, with reviews, a picture of the recipe, and it's cool, right? That actually makes me click through a lot. You could be doing schema markup. There's many different types of schema markup for structured data, for blog posts. It ranges. And if you're trying to figure out how to do it, Google has a tool. It's called Structured Data Markup Helper. Um, and you should be able to find this in your uh, Google Search Console. So you can put in the URL where you want to use schema markup. So once you put in the URL, you just start tagging. And it just you just start clicking. You click, all right, to get started, what type of data? You can say, all right, this is an article, this is a local business. Once you start clicking, let's say it's an article, you start seeing this WYSIWYG, and then you start clicking around. Once you start clicking around, boom, right? This is how you click around. You're like, all right, this is a name, whatever it may be. And then boom, you're gonna get, um, you're gonna get like a piece of code that you wanna end up popping on your site. Now, the cool part about this is they walk you through this, so if you're unsure how to use this, don't worry about it. Once you start going through it, they'll walk you through all of it. Now with sitemaps, do you have a sitemap? If not, you can try using uh, Yoast SEO plugin if you're on WordPress. If not, you may have to manually create it or there may be a plugin for whatever platform you're on. Uh, Jared, is there a plugin for, uh, what is it called, Shopify? A plugin for Shopify for which part? For the sitemaps? Oh <laughs> yeah, gosh, they have, it's kind of like WordPress, they have a ton of them. So uh, if you want, I can look up the one that I used and chime back in and let you know what it is. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, okay. But in general, the point I'm trying to make is you need a sitemap, and you don't have to create it manually. There's pretty much a plugin for any major CMS out there. And once you do that, upload it to Google Search Console. In Google Search Console, you can get to the sitemaps with the left side navigation. You also want to disavow anything that's junk. So disavow your comments. You can disavow like scripts that sometimes Google crawls when they shouldn't be doing. I do this on my site. It just helps ensure that they're only picking the right stuff. Site structure. How deep do you go? The more deeper you go, the better off you are. So you start seeing, you know, I'm going like three levels deep in a lot of areas, but I'm not going four or five. I need to change this, of course. The more deeper you go, the more internal links you are the higher your rankings tend to be. And if you're wondering, I know I got a lot of questions about this uh, through my email inbox the other day. They're like, oh, I think I'm penalized. How do I figure this out? Check out Barracuda. They have this penguin tool. You click on it, you use it for free. It'll tell you if you're penalized. So once you click through it, it'll show you, all right, here's some ups, here's some downs, and then you'll be like, all right, here are the name of the updates. You know, it's you know, Google Penguin, Panda, and you can just end up seeing what are the penalizations caused by, because they'll show you lines for the updates, and then if you start seeing massive traffic drops, then you know it's from the update. So as you can see from this uh, chart, here's my organic traffic, technically not mine, but I did on the site, and then you can just end up being like, all right, you know, am I penalized by Penguin or Panda? You can just select which one's on or off and then I'll show you what updates Google's rolling out, and you can see if your traffic's going up or down from these updates. So some action items for you is one, download and complete your SEO audit cheat sheet, right, or your checklist. Uh, once you do that, it'll just give you a rough rubric or a guideline on what you need to do in what order. You need to make sure you're auditing your performance, and you need to audit your competitor's performance, right, using the tools that we gave, so make sure you download all the sheets. You follow the step-by-step -step instructions. I'm not gonna go in depth on them because they're literally broken down step-by-step. -step. It literally walks you through everything you need to do. The whole point of these presentations are for me to give you an overview. I'm not gonna bore you with four hours of step-by-step. -step. The sheets break down the step-by-step. -step. 
And then from there on our weekly calls, you ask questions and we break down what you're doing wrong, where you're getting stuck, and we help you get through it. And of course, if you have any questions, you can always post them on Facebook uh, as well in the group. And then Jared, were you able to find the site map stuff? Yeah, um, so basically, Shopify has a pretty good native uh, sitemap they create for you automatically. And it's just your store name, your, your regular URL, forward slash sitemap.xml. You don't need an extra plugin or anything for that. But what you should know is it's good, but it's not that good. So I actually use a plugin that's called Site, Site Mapper. And it allows me to go in and really get detailed on which pages I want to make sure are included so I can, you know, have the best chance at indexation. The other thing that's really important to know, I'd say, especially for this conversation, is how to make pages no follow and no index in Shopify. And it's actually kind of tricky, or was kind of tricky, until I found this plugin called No Follow and No Index Manager, and it works awesome. And the reason I need that so much is because my Shopify store is new, and a lot of the content I copied over from my legacy Magento site, and I didn't want to be penalized by duplicate content, but I wanted to use it to keep people on my site. So that's kind of like the long story to answer to your question. Cool. Well, that's pretty much it for this week. Make sure you download these sheets. When you download these sheets and you do the homework, you're going to be good to go on our weekly calls, and you're going to start seeing results. Um, and if you're not seeing results, you can ask me, you can be like, Neil, I'm not seeing results. Well, show me that you've done the sheets, and even if you have you're struggling, like, I'll help you through it. It's not that hard. You guys can do it. You guys are smart. In the next weeks, I'm going to be discussing some fun content marketing stuff, how to find ideas, right, all the way from when you get stuck to what you should write on, how to beat your competition. And I'm going to show you how to rank the content at the top, right? So I think next week will be fun. But that's pretty much it. Thanks for attending and start applying some of this stuff. Let me know how this goes on our weekly call, and I'll be there helping you out and guiding you through it. Thank you for everything.